Hello and welcome to Made with Carlenergy, episode 15. I'm Carleen and I am on Ravelry and Instagram as Carlenergy. And you can also find the Ravelry group by searching Made with Carlenergy podcast in the groups tab. It is Sunday, January 3rd, 2016. So happy new year, everyone. I hope you all had a fun celebration to bring in the new year and I hope you're enjoying it so far. Uh, I have had a really nice, relaxing couple of days. I ended up having both Thursday and Friday off of work, which was much appreciated. Uh, I was a little burnt out after Christmas. Um, it was really nice, of course, to be home for Christmas and everything, but uh, I was pretty stressed out with all the sock knitting that I was trying to finish and uh, traveling a lot to see my family, so it was nice to have another little break. And I did get my knitting mojo back, so I have some projects to show you. But first I want to announce the winners of the uh, Local Love Knit Along giveaway. I hosted the Local Love Knit Along, uh, which was open to crochet and spinning as well, of course. So I co-hosted that with Ellen of the Idle Cat Knits podcast, and it started on my birthday, which was October 23rd. And uh, I closed the finished objects thread in my group on January 1st. And uh, I was trying to do a live recording of my prize drawing, but I realized that I hadn't hit record. So I've already drawn for the prizes. I used uh, random.org for the random number generator. And I put in uh, posts uh, numbers 2 through 32 since there were uh, 31 entries. Uh, the first post was mine in the thread, of course, and then there were 31 entries. So... Um, Numbers 2 through 32 were entered into random.org, and I have three numbers. And then what I did was, I have uh, since I have three prizes, I wrote them each on a little piece of paper and put them in a teacup, and I was randomly drawing from this as I was uh, drawing the numbers from random.org, um, just because I didn't know how else to delegate who got what prize. So that's what I did for that. And so... The first prize um, goes to uh, post number 32, and that was uh, Elise Deer, who is uh, Elise. And Elise uh, lives in Seattle, and she uh, has just learned how to spin, so she's spinning on a drop spindle. And she spun up some uh, Romney fiber that was local to her and made some slippers out of it. She knitted some slippers out of her first hand spun, which is really cool and really impressive. So congratulations, Elise, on learning how to spin. And I'm really impressed that you knit uh, some slippers out of your first hand spun because my first hand spun was um, not really worthy of being knit. Or, I mean, maybe it will, maybe it is. Um, I'll have to look at it again. But um, anyway, I'm really impressed that you um, have learned how to spin and are already knitting with your hand spun. And uh, your prize is two skeins of hand spun yarn from Ellen of Idle Cat Knits. Um, I thought it was really cool that you ended up getting me the hand spun prize. Um, this is 76 yards of 80% mohair, 20% merino um, in a woolen prep. So this skein is woolen. And then this skein is 88% or 88 yards of a worsted prep. So Ellen uh, spun these two skeins from the same fiber. It is the mohair merino blend um, from a, uh, she got that from a woman who is local to her in Texas and um, spun it up in two different methods. So I don't know if you can see too much by sight, but you can definitely feel the difference. The woolen yarn is a little airier and fluffier, and then the worsted yarn is a bit smoother and uh, they're both really soft and lovely. So congratulations, Elise, and go ahead and private message me and I will send those out to you. And also each prize uh, is going to include a set of these soaps. This is double butter soap from Point of View Farm, which is local to me. The farm is about half an hour from me and I've visited and met all the sheep and they are really lovely animals. And so this soap is made with uh, sheep milk, uh, cocoa and shea butters, and it has some lavender in it. So it smells really nice. And so each prize um, has a set of soaps to go with it. So the second winner is 
Uh, post number 26, who is Tokyo City Girl. Her name is Jacqueline, and she lives in Tokyo, Japan. So uh, she knit some mittens out of uh, Noro yarn, which is uh, produced in Japan. I love Noro yarn, and um, I've done some research on their company, and I think they, they really have um, a nice um, awareness of every step of the process from sheep to dyeing to spinning, um, so uh, I really like their yarn and uh, I think it's really cool that you live in Japan and that you use some yarn that is made in Japan. And so you are getting the skein of Spun Fiber Company Native Yarn. This is 100% single flock Jacob wool and this is really sweet because you even get to know the names of the sheep that went into this yarn. Uh, their names were are Heloise, Haven, and Felicity and they live in Belvedere, New Jersey, which is where Spun Fiber Co. is based. And so this is 210 yards of a worsted weight, and it's a lovely natural gray color. And so thank you again, Brittany, from Spun Fiber Co. for donating this skein, and congratulations, congratulations, Jacqueline. This will be traveling over to you in Japan. And then finally, uh, we have the skein of Volan Vine Yarns which was donated by Kristen of Volenvine and the Yarngasm podcast. And this is her Smitten DK base. This is the Sweet Dreams colorway. And this is 80% Superwash Merino, 10% Nylon, and 10% Cashmere, 231 yards. And the winner of this is post number two, who is uh, Mirj. Uh, her name is Mirjam. I'm probably not pronouncing that, that right, and I apologize. But Mirjam made this uh, gorgeous shawl, and she used uh, sole wool, which is, uh, let me just, I think it was the, she explained that it's the only wool that is hand spun, hand dyed, and hand painted in Israel, where, uh, where Mirjam lives. So I thought that was really cool that she lives in Israel, and she found a yarn, like the only yarn that is actually made completely in Israel, and um, made a, she made a beautiful poncho. And so congratulations, you win the skein of Volenbein and the set of the soaps. So it was really fun to draw those prizes and to see who won. And again, I really appreciate everybody participating. And um, it is really, it's kind of cool that um, it was a local local love knit along and, uh, and two international people ended up winning. So um, I'll have to look up uh, the policies of um, shipping things to those countries, but um, just send me your address and uh, I will figure that out and get those out to you as soon as possible. So um, with that, I will show you what I've been working on. First, I uh, started a new project. This is a shawl for my mom. It is the Nermalin 2 pattern by Heidi Allender. And um, I had talked about wanting to cast this on, and so I haven't gotten too far, but uh, it's a garter stitch shawl that gradually um, increases, and there's some lace patterns eventually. But um, this is in Volan Vine Yarns uh, Blitz Space in the Deck the Halls colorway. And so it is, it is a Christmas-themed yarn, and I'm using my Christmas theme bag from a homespun house even though it's after Christmas, um, because my mom really loves Christmas, so I really, uh, Christmas reminds me of my mom, and, um, my mom's birthday is January 8th, so I'm not sure if I can finish this before that, but I wanted to get it on the needles, and I'm using size 4, uh, 3.5 millimeter needles, my Chagu interchangeables, and, um, yeah, so it's been it's been a nice easy project so far. Haven't gotten to the lace obviously, but for the lace sections, I'm going to be using this uh, cream colored yarn. This is um, from You and Me Merinos, which is a farm in Ashland, New York, which I haven't been to. I'm not sure how far away they are from me, but I got this at Rhinebeck, and so I might try to visit this farm sometime in the spring if they have uh, if they allow visitors. And so yeah, it's a really nice fingering weight two ply, and I think it will look nice with this as a contrast for the lace section. 
So I started that on Wednesday right after I recorded my last episode and um, worked on it a little bit Thursday but then kind of put it down and haven't worked on it since then because I have been completely obsessed with my scrap blanket. Um, it's been a while since I picked this up and seriously worked on it. Uh, I started it about five years ago and it's with the I forgot to look it up, but it's um, it's a pattern that was kind of uh, uh, more of a tutorial on a blog, and it was um, before the Cozy Memories version of the mitered sock yarn blanket came out. So it's in more of the kind of diamond formation instead of the um, rows of squares. So it's kind of it makes it trickier for me to show you where the progress has been on this, but. Um, this whole row of five squares is completely new and then I think most of this top row like this way is new so um, yeah I picked this up on uh, Friday and have just been going crazy on it it's been so much fun I think I've added about 20 squares and I also, this is the back side, and you can see that the ends are mostly woven in. So I had this many. <laughs> this is my little colorful spaghetti ball of ends that I wove in. Um, and that was a main thing with me not wanting to work on it, was it was so messy and tangled, and I just, um, I really needed to sit down and get those ends taken care of. So I finally did. I still have the ends on the top row because I like to to leave them in in these um, kind of seams that are formed when you pick up the stitches to add more squares and so the top ones don't have that edge yet to sew the end in. Um, but I definitely want to try to make more of an effort to sew in as I go so that I'm not plagued by ends once again. Um, so let's see, I wanted to point a couple out. So most of these, um, most of these yarns are from projects that I've made, but now that I've done some swaps, I finally have some squares from mini skeins from other people. So the first skein from somebody else that I added was this one, and that's from Amber of the Yarn Junkie podcast. And then next to that is some Socks That Rock in the Sea Scum, Sea Scum Run colorway. That's from Jenny of the Tiny Paper Foxes podcast. I really like this colorway. Might have to try to get some of that. And this is Gashley Crumb by Volenvine. This is uh, Salt Marsh by Skeiny Dipping. Um, this one's interesting. This one's also from Amber. Um, and this one over here is from the same mini skein but they look quite different. Um, this one reminds me more of a watermelon, and this one reminds me more of a Christmas colorway. So, same mini skein, two very different squares, which I think is really fun. Uh, this is some Woolen Jinx from, that was a collaboration dye from, uh, between Woolen Vine and Jinx Yarn, so that one's really special, and that one is in my Lumpy Space Shawl. It's one of the colors in here. This is from Mina of The Knitting Expat. This is from Brittany of Spun Fiber Co. When she sent me the prize donations, she sent me some mini skeins as well. Um, this one is Madeline Tosh Edison Bulb, and that was a unicorn tail that I bought from Argyle Yarn Shop when I met up with some other podcasters in Brooklyn back in November. And yeah, a bunch of others. Um, so I... I definitely feel really good about the progress that I made on this the past couple of days and I'm really glad to have it back in rotation um, and I might even wear it as a scarf for now um, I think it looks cool as a scarf um, of course there's all the ends but, uh, but yeah it's I almost considered finishing it and making it into a scarf instead of continuing to make it a blanket but I do want it to be a blanket, so. Um, yeah, my squares are pretty small. They are 31 stitches on a US2, and I think a lot of people are making bigger squares with more stitches and a bigger needle. Um, so I feel like, yeah, I, I don't see as much progress in terms of the size of the blanket, but I do, I do really, 
I like the shape of it. I like how the edge is um, kind of, I don't know what to call that, jagged. Um, so I do like the, the form of it and um, I like that there, that there are going to be tons of squares when it's finished. So I'm going to keep going on it. And I'm actually using, at least for now, I'm using these um, Susan Bates needles and these uh, were given to me um, by my mom's friend who knows that I knit and she found a bunch of needles at a garage sale and she bought them for me. So they're just some old Susan Bates. Um, so not, they're not the, the most awesome needles ever, uh, but they're, they're pretty su sufficient for the blanket and I like the kind of the vintage feel of them. And um, yeah, I, I might eventually buy a special pair of straight needles. Um, Molly of a Homespun House and I think Laura of the Fawn Knits, um, they've both purchased, you know, needles that are specifically for their sock yarn blankets. And I think that's a really nice idea since you will be working on it a lot for a long time. So it's it, it makes sense to have a really beautiful pair of needles to use for it. So I might do that eventually if I find a nice pair of um, small straight needles for or at a at a yarn shop as I'm I don't want to just order them I want I'm I'll buy them from a yarn shop at some point but for the for now I really I'm really enjoying these actually and I'm keeping it all in my lantern moon project bag and I have one of my Jimmy Beans beanie bag uh, pouches in here these are all the yarns that I've already balled up and have used and then got my scissors and my darning needle in there and then I have another bag um, which came with um, a fringe supply company order that I had made and in here I have mini skeins that haven't been balled up yet so lots of scraps to play with and I'm very excited about it I got this uh, mug for Christmas as well and I'm drinking some uh, coconut mango oolong tea by Stash. Um, Jenny from Ty Tiny Paper Foxes gave this to me, and it's really delicious. I'm going to have to get some more of this. Really, really nice. Thank you, Jenny. So, other than that, um, I, of course, have so many projects that are hibernating at this point, and I really want to start finishing things. Um... I don't really want to, I, there's, I, I could go crazy with casting on things, but um, I haven't finished those socks that are left over from Christmas yet, and I haven't uh, restarted my gingerbread house socks, and I still have this sweater to finish. This is the Hugo sweater by Veronique Avery. This is Brooklyn Tweed Shelter. It's beautiful, and it's for my friend. Um, who asked me to make it for him last year, and um, I told him it would take about a year, probably, for me to get all the way through it. Um, and now it, it is actually getting colder, so I really want to finish this up. Um, so I'm going to try to seam the shoulders of this today and start the collar, because it has this um, big ribbed collar, and I want to at least start that today because I blocked the pieces several weeks ago and then just let it sit in my basket again. And that's not cool. I really need to actually work on this. I keep thinking about it as if I'm working on it and I'm not actually working on it. So that has to be done. And uh, yeah, maybe work on my mom's shawl a little bit today and try to avoid the blanket because honestly I just want to add more squares to this all day long but I I have other projects that need to finish need to be need to be finished so uh, yeah I think that that's going to cover it for now uh, I haven't been spinning either um, it's just been on the back burner and I'm a little annoyed about my yarn that's on my wheel right now <laughs> um, I'm spinning this beautiful, well, I did spin this beautiful braid of Into the World. I guess I'll just kind of show you right now. But these are, this is the singles. And um, it's the bird girl colorway. And so I've been plying it, but as you can see, there's this mess here. 
because I tried to bring, well, I did, I brought my wheel to my parents' house in New Jersey for Christmas, um, because for some reason I thought I'd have all this time to spin while I was home, and I wanted to bring it home since it was partly a Christmas present from my parents. Uh, they helped me pay for it, and when I was leaving my apartment, I um, still had this ball of yarn attached to the wheel because it's been be being plied onto the bobbin and it was raining so I put a blanket over the wheel to carry it out of my, my place and this ended up dropping and I didn't realize it and it was rolling all over my lawn and um, got tangled up on the side of the house so uh, the singles broke and so now um, now it's all tangled and um, I have to go in and, and do some surgery and fix it. Um, it is coming out really nicely, but I'm just, you know, I don't, I don't feel like fixing it yet, so. Um, the singles are very pretty, and I guess this kind of gives you an idea of what it will look like when it's plied. I'm doing a two-ply, so it will be, uh, barber pulled, but some of the color sections did end up lining up, so I think it will still kind of have a stripey effect when it's knit up. But um, this is the first time I'm really plying this much yarn on my wheel. Um, it's a full four ounces, so I'm really interested to see how this all comes out. But um, that gives you an kind of an idea of what it will look like. And I think it's coming out as a DK to a worsted weight, but again, um, there's a lot of variation, I think, in the singles, and I'm not exactly sure how it all how it all will turn out after it's it's uh, soaked and everything like that. So anyway, spinning is still kind of on the back burner, but um, hopefully I'll go through a big spinning kick after I finish some uh, knitting projects. So. Yeah, I'll wrap it up and get back to my knitting, and uh, I hope you all are uh, having a good start to your new year, and I hope you're enjoying your knitting, and thank you all so much for participating in the local Love Knit Along. Please uh, private message me with your address if you are a winner, and I hope you all have a good week, and I will see you soon. Bye.